Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 12 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. In the previous episode, we debuted a team that has three of the strongest duels that you can use in the format right now, Mimikyu plus Calyrex Ice Rider, Torkoal plus Venusaur, and the Kyogre plus Seismitoad. So we'll be playing a couple more matches with you today. Details for the team are in the description below, and yeah, thanks so much as always for watching. If you enjoy, please share your support by leaving a like, I'd really appreciate it. And question of the day, we're a few days into Series 12, I'm curious what you think about the early format at the moment. Uh, there definitely have been a lot of Zacian teams. I feel like almost every team I've run into so far has Zacian, but I, I think that's one thing that makes team building kind of interesting in Series 12, where it's like you know so many of the teams you're going to run into have Zacian, and so you can do a good job in the team building process to kind of deter them from really bringing it as much as they would like to. So, yeah, those are just some of my early thoughts, but I definitely want to try out some of the more obscure Pokemon as we play throughout this format. So, let's get started. Our first match of the day, and we are up against Groudon plus Calyrex Ice. Okay. That's a pretty cool duo, mainly just because I feel like I'm so used to seeing one of them paired with Zacian. And so we actually have some similar ideas here, right? They've got Groudon Venu, I've got Torko Venu, they've got Mimikyu Calyrex, I've got Mimikyu Calyrex. The one main difference is, of course, I've got the Rain Mode with Kyogre and Seismitoad. I think Dynamaxing Calyrex here can be very good for us, especially because I've got Max Steel Spike, allowing me to actually hit their Calyrex for super effective damage. So in this one, I'm actually leaning towards like Mimikyu Torkoal Calyrex in the back, because I feel like if we get Trick Room up, we're going to be in a pretty good spot. And I think I actually don't mind just leading Kyogre just to get like a Water Spout off and try to bait them into KOing Kyogre. I don't love Seismitoad in this matchup because they've got the Venusaur. Now, the thing is, I can max Airstream with Seismitoad into Venusaur, but sometimes Venusaurs are Sashed or Kobud, uh, and then we would just get max Overgrowth in return. Plus, because I'm physical here and they have Intimidate, it's not as effective. And then Venusaur feels a little bit awkward to bring because of them having Calyrex Ice Rider as well as Thunderous. It's not necessarily a bad Pokemon, but it feels pretty risky to me to, to like comfortably bring in here. So, yeah. I think the general idea is to try to sweep my opponent under Trick Room. Now, the interesting component is that we obviously have a lot of similar Pokemon, and there's no guarantee I'll actually outspeed them with my Calyrex, right, under Trick Room. But the good thing is I have the slowest Pokemon on both teams, and that's Torkoal. So they're going to go with Incineroar and Venusaur. Okay. If it's Instant Venu, I would think it's just Calyrex plus Groudon in the back. If that's the case, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Turn 1 if you're my opponent... You could switch Incineroar out into Groudon immediately. I don't mind going for a Water Spout here. And just a Trick Room, I think. So we'll see if they make the switch. The best case would be them switching Incineroar out into Groudon, maxing Venusaur, Vine Lashing Kyogre, and just giving me a free uh, switch in into Calyrex. In that position, even though I lose the Pokemon immediately, uh, it puts us in a really strong offensive position because then I can just bring out the um, Calyrex and then just go self-shadow sneak into Glacial Lance or a max move. So, yeah. Instant plus Venu makes sense as a lead, right? Because you can pivot out either Pokemon into your Groudon immediately. Wow. That is not how I expected Turn 1 to play out. Okay. They don't switch. They don't fake out. So I actually just knock out Incineroar for free. Now, given that Venusaur didn't max, I'm guessing it's going for a Sleep Powder here? Yeah. And they target Kyogre. Okay, that works for me. Hmm. That is not how I expected Turn 1 to play out ever. I thought the Ensign would always click Fake Out into the Kyogre or switch out into Groudon, but I'll take it. Uh, getting rid of Incineroar here is actually a really big deal because that's their best way to slow down my Calyrex, essentially. So they're going to bring out their Calyrex, which is fine. I've got Torkoal in the back. Um, so at this point, I honestly want them to KO my Kyogre, so I get a free switching. I don't love the idea of hard switching out, because both of these Pokemon are so valuable in the back. So I'm down to just, like, yeah, take a turn of sleep here. I've got Will-O-Wisp, so I don't mind just going for Will-O-Wisp on a Calyrex Ice Rider, because that's probably going to be their Dynamax option right now. And if we hit that and they're not Lumberry, their damage output is just so, so poor going into this endgame. So this turn is interesting because I could contemplate switching out Kyogre, but there are two things that I'm nervous about. One, I switch Kyogre out and then just knock out whatever I'm bringing in. Um, okay, I like the decision here to not go for a Dynamax here. I think that's smart. 
And two, the other thing I'd really want to be careful about is switching in Kyogre and having them like sleep powder that slot and then get something with the sleep powder. That would be really bad for us. So they're going to break my disguise now. I could have taunted Venu as well here, but I'd rather prioritize getting a burn on Calyrex. <sighs> okay, I do miss. Um, that's okay. That's okay. That's obviously a little bit frustrating, because I think if we hit that, we essentially just have the game won, because then I just bring in Calyrex, self-shadow sneak, the game's just over from that spot. But we're still honestly in okay shape. Um, I think I'm going to bring out my Calyrex here. The only thing is now I have to respect the Sleep Powder from Venusaur, right? Which is really frustrating. I could obviously self-shadow sneak into my Calyrex and just attack. Uh, we've seen Sleep Powder and Leaf Storm so far from Venusaur, that's basically it. Their last one should be Groudon, and I don't know who's going to be faster between our Calyrexes here. Mm. Like, I've got Max Steel Spike as well, right? I just don't know if they actually KO Mimikyu here, and if I could get the burn, like, I don't necessarily need Weakness Policy activated on my end, so I don't mind Steel Spike into Venu here, and then just Willow Wisp into their Calyrex. What I don't want is for their Calyrex to be so bulky that they survive a... and they're, they are going to be faster than me, okay. So, this is the downside of running Willow Wisp, as <laughs> uh, we all know, but, you know, it's like 85% of the time we come out of that turn very, very uh, well. And even with this, it's it's not the end of the world by any means, right? Like, the thing about Pokemon is that you need to remind yourself that when you're using slightly inaccurate attacks, you are going to miss a fair amount of the time. So, you have to be willing to potentially miss a couple of these attacks, right? This is where it's like a little bit awkward, because I actually set up Trick Room, and their Calyrex uh, appears to at least speed tie with us, if not just constantly outspeed us. And so, that also makes this a little bit awkward, but I'm okay with it still. Oh, it is a speed tie. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought I thought we were min speed here, so I didn't think they would always just be faster, but I wasn't 100% sure if we were exactly min speed. So, uh, this would give me a defense boost on both Pokemon. That's a really big deal, because now I should survive an attack with Mimikyu. Unless they have Steel Spike as well, then they might still get the knockout, but I don't think a Hailstorm KOs us here. Okay, it is just Hailstorm, perfect. Gonna go into Mimikyu, no problem. And beautiful. With that defense boost, we take that with no problem. So, we get a second chance at hitting a Will-O-Wisp here. And we will connect this time around. I'd be shocked if they're Lumberry, because they have Mimikyu on their team, so you would think it's just self-activation weakness policy, and yeah, that looks like it's the case. So, this is perfect, right? I've shut down my opponent's main Dynamax option. And now they're going to bring out Groudon, but Groudon's not really that scary uh, to go up against. Especially because we already have this attack boost, we've got this defense boost. Like, you just don't really scare me with very much damage at this moment. So this next turn is interesting, because I can obviously self-shadow sneak. And we've got Torkoal in the back. There's still two turns of Trick Room left. So I don't mind just going for a self-shadow sneak and then just trying to KO Groudon right now. Because Groudon's definitely not outspeeding us unless they're like Iron Ball or a power item. And even if Groudon were faster, I don't think you're one-shotting Calyrex with the defense boost, to be honest. So, I don't really have too much to worry about. And they don't protect Groudon here, so that should ensure the victory for us. Barring anything really crazy. Cool. So now we got Calyrex to plus three attack, plus one defense, and it'll be a plus four attack after this turn. So, this is why I was, like, angling towards setting up Trick Room. I think it was just turn one of the game that was really surprising. I didn't expect to ever get a Water Spout off and knock out the Incineroar. But by KOing Incineroar, it makes the game a lot harder for my opponent, because that's, like, their best way to slow down the momentum that I get from Calyrex Ice Rider. Yeah, and they just go for Hailstorm again. That's the other advantage of having Steel Spike here. Your matchup against opposing Calyrex Ice Riders is substantially improved on it. <laughs> that doesn't even KO the Mimikyu, thanks to Laburn and the defense boost. Well... Hail will finish us, uh, it off, but it denies them, obviously, a potential boost from their ability. And now, I have my final Pokemon in Torkoal. So, once again, using a team like this is really interesting, because you do have to maneuver using, like, really fast strategies, as well as really slow strategies, right? Choice Scarf Kyogre plus Trochrim seems kind of counterintuitive, and this game was kind of awkward, because I was expecting the Kyogre to just go down in one hit, but they didn't actually knock it out. So, made things a little bit more challenging for us. Um... See, so last turn had Trick Room, our Calyrex is speed tie. It's always fine to just Steel Spike and Eruption here, honestly. I, I don't think Calyrex can ever win the game here, even with the Weakness Policy activation, thanks to me having this, you know, super boosted Calyrex. So, yeah, they just end up forfeiting. And, yeah, this is the power of using Scarf Kyogre early to pressure your opponent, while also setting up Trick Room. And, you know, what I like about the Mimikyu-Calyrex combo is that 
when you have seen Mimikyu previously, you probably expect it paired with something that's a little bit more passive, right? Something like an Incineroar or an NDD, for example. Those can be a little bit more useful in guaranteeing Kirkroom, but the thing is that they don't really put on very much pressure damage-wise. So what's interesting about the Kyogre is it's like, well, if you ignore a Choice Scarf Kyogre in Rain, Water Spell just does so much damage. And so you almost feel forced to target it, but if you target it and ignore Mimikyu, well, that allows me to get Trick Room up successfully. Um, I think this game also would have been a little bit more challenging had they gone for maybe Sleep Powder on Mimikyu on turn one. So I was kind of surprised by the Kyogre target, but that made things a lot easier for me as well. So yeah, really interesting first game there. And let's just keep things going. Second match of the day here, and it is Lunala Groudon. Okay, very cool. Lunala Groudon. This is a archetype that I've seen a little bit of. You know, some players used it way back as well, a couple years ago. <sighs> the Sun match up here is really interesting. Like, I feel like I should be playing towards Trick Room, but... The Umbreon definitely scares me a little bit on their end. Hmm. Because the thing is that Calyrex under Trick Room looks excellent here. The problem is actually getting Trick Room up. I also think Mimikyu is an intriguing lead because it gets access to will o and Shadow Sneak, so I can like Shadow Sneak to break Lunala's shield. But I really don't know who to drop is the problem. Because my, my other problem is just dealing with the um, Umbreon, but... I mean, can I really bring Seismitoad out here? It's just Venusaur that scares me so much. So, I honestly think I'm going to play towards the same strategy as the previous game. And the main reason is because I think Calyrex under Trick Room is by far my most consistent way of KOing my opponent, right? My other max options here, Venusaur can get demolished by Lunala as well as Thunderous, and then Seismitoad gets crushed by the Venusaur. And Seismitoad doesn't even deal, like, super good damage here, right? Like, I can Airstream, I can Geyser, but they've also got Intimidate on Incineroar. I can't necessarily one-shot things like Lunala or the, um... Umbreon, so yeah. Lunala is definitely a Pokemon I want to try a little bit more of, though, in this format, because I think it is one that is a little bit tough to use in a restricted format where you only get one restricted, but I think it's very cool as like a, a secondary option on these teams. They're going to go with Thunderous and Venusaur, okay. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, they can't deny my Trick Room other than a Sleep Powder from Venusaur. Man, I could have just let Calyrex into this, but then they probably just go for a Sleep Powder. So, I think I'm just going to Trick Room and Water Spout, honestly. We'll see, you know, first of all, whether or not they have Sleep Powder. Okay, wow, Thunderous does not max or switch out here either. So, I just get a free knockout onto it. These games have... I feel like turn one keeps playing out in a very different way than I expected to, but I'll gladly take it. It's probably Sleep Powder here, right? Onto Mimikyu now? Yeah. So, this is what I was expecting in turn one of the last game. I'm okay with that, though. Uh, like, I burned a turn of sleep here already, so that's always a good start. What's interesting now is, like, do you just bring out Groudon immediately? Because if so, I can obviously just pivot Kyogre out and then change the weather. But the upside for them is they can angle for a Swords Dance right now as well. I could even think about Dynamaxing the Kyogre. Maybe a controversial play, though. <laughs> I'm just worried, if you're my opponent now, you max Venusaur, you G-max Vinelash Kyogre, and then you Swords Dance with Groudon is my fear. Boy, I think this honestly might boil down to whether or not Mimikyu wakes up quickly enough. Uh, I could switch out here and say go into Torkoal. Okay, actually, I don't think that's a terrible idea, right? Because, like, I don't think Torkoal's that essential to this endgame. It would be nice to have it a sweep under Trick Room, but I don't, like... There are a bunch of options here, right? Let's say they get the knockout onto Torkoal, then I get a free switch in back into Kyogre, and I just change the weather. If you don't knock out Torkoal, Mimikyu wakes up, and I get Trick Room up. Obviously amazing for us. Uh, okay, they're going for the... This is bad for us, I'm just gonna Sleep Powder, uh, and then, yeah, hope they hit in Sword Stance here, right? Oh, they actually press this blades, okay. Torkoal dodges it. I think Sleep Powder is a mighty fine play there because it covers for me switching out. It's just, it's really volatile to keep clicking Sleep Powder, right? But it's just by far my opponent's best play. Um, so I think that makes a lot of sense. If we wake up here, though, they're in bad shape. Okay, and we managed to wake up. Nice. I mean, the, the downside now is obviously the Torkoal is asleep, but I can't really complain about something like that. I've got Taunt, but I'd rather just put the, like, burn the Groudon because if Groudon's burned, they have no damage output anymore. And I'll just take a turn of Sleep here with the Torkoal. 
And this is why, like, Sleep Powder from Venusaur it can be so good, but it's also scary, right? Because you're normally going to be faster than your opponent, so you have to worry about it hitting to begin with. And then even if you hit, you know, you can just burn a turn of sleep immediately. And so, yeah, like, there are a lot of coin flips, basically, when you use it, which is why it's like, okay, and they max Groudon, that's fine with me. Uh, maxing Groudon's okay, especially if you're KOing Torkoal. If we hit will o -Wisp and you're not Lumberry, and I do indeed outspeed you, then... We should be in absolutely phenomenal shape. So now my question is how fast this is crowd on. Because it's still winnable for them for sure, especially if like I they outspeed me or I miss the Will-O-Wisp. Okay, so Torkoal's gonna take its first turn to sleep here. We are faster and Mimikyu hits, beautiful. Will-O-Wisp is so good. It's like won us both games so far, honestly, and they're not Lumberry. I, I called it a little bit too too far in advance, because if they had Lum there, then obviously will o -Wisp wouldn't just necessarily save us. But look how little damage it does to Mimikyu, and even without the burn, looks like we would have survived. So I wonder if the Groudon here has Swords Dance, because I thought my opponent's best chance of winning was just going for Sleep Powder and then Swords Dancing and then hoping to just sweep everything with Precipice Blades. Because if you look at my team, I don't have a single Pokemon that resists or is immune to Ground-type attacks or a Levitator. So yeah. Um, now what? Burnt your Groudon, Torkoal's taking a turn to sleep. I'm just waiting for the switches into the back Pokemon. This turn's a little bit awkward, honestly. Uh, I'm down to just Shadow Sneak Lunala, honestly, and Eruption. I wonder what Lunala items are common, actually, right now. I'm not sure. Taunt could have been interesting, because, like, maybe this ends up activating, like, a Weakness Policy. And that would be kind of awkward, but, okay, it's not policied. So they'll probably get a double KO here, right? But that's fine. I honestly want Torgo to faint because I'm waiting for the free opportunity to go back out into my Calyrex, and we actually don't even faint from two Max Quakes there. Speaking to, yeah, Groudon's inability to do much damage with the burn in, Mimikyu's decent bulk here. Again, they're going to reverse Trick Room. I think that's a smart play. Now, the awkward thing about my opponent reversing Trick Room, though, is that it sets up Kyogre now, right? Because now Kyogre can just come in and Water Spout. So then my other question is, does Luna have Wide Guard as well? You have two increased stages of special defense, so that's valuable. But I think Calyrex can Dynamax even outside of Trick Room at this point in the game. Mm. I might as well try to protect- ah, I don't even mind sacrificing Torkoal, honestly. Torkoal doesn't do anything for me at this point in the game, right? So, okay, I'm gonna Shadow Sneak Lunala and go for a Yawn onto that slot as well. Because I think at this point we just Dynamax Calyrex Ice Rider and then just Max Hailstorm uh, while Water Spouting with Kyogre next to it. I don't. I might not even need a Water Spot. I might actually just Ice Beam. Uh, never mind. Never mind. They're at plus three special defense with both Pokemon. That's obviously not good. Okay, they actually Max Quake into Mimikyu again. So you can see the value of Willow Wisp, right? By having Willow Wisp, I force my opponent to <laughs> take three turns of their Dynamax just to knock out a Mimikyu. The only awkward thing is I wanted my opponent to KO a Pokemon sooner because it would give me a free switch in. Okay, so they are a Meteor Beam. Ah, uh, do you really? I, I think it's very unlikely they have Wide Guard, to be honest, because if you had Wide Guard, then you wouldn't be running, um, it's like, I mean, you could run Wide Guard, Meteor Beam, and Trick Room, but then you have to give up one of your Psychic or Ghost type attack, right? Either way, though, actually, I think they've done a quite quite a nice, job, a nice job playing around my Trick Room. Like, it felt like the game was essentially over as soon as I burnt the Groudon, but that's definitely not the case anymore. Especially because they got Lunala to plus three special defense, which is pretty interesting. But I think the good thing for me is now, yeah, I just get Calyrex in for free. And from my opponent's perspective, it's awkward, right? It's like, do you want to change the weather? If you do, you have to switch Groudon out, but Venusaur just gets wrecked by Water Spout. So I think the main question I have right now is the item on the... Or sorry, it, does the Lunala have Wide Guard? Because if not, I would think a Water Spout still KOs it, even with them being at plus three special defense. Actually, I can't really say that with 100% confidence, honestly. I think your play for my opponent is to protect Groudon. Yeah, I could definitely still lose this thanks to Sleep Powder and them getting to plus three. Your best bet is to protect Groudon here. I might need to lock myself into Origin Pulse instead then, which stings. I just don't know if Water Spell KOs Lunala at that range. Uh, I went for Water Spell and Hailstorm. 
Oh, they switch route on out. I think this always wins the game for me then, doesn't it? Because Water Spell should just KO your Venusaur. I, like, in my eyes, their way of winning was protect Venusaur, damage my Kyogre with Lunala, like, hope to survive an attack, and then you're in a pretty interesting spot. But the thing is, now I should just pick up a double knockout, I think. Unless Water Spell gets, like, a low roll, but the thing is, I'm also getting the hail up here, so Venusaur is going to take hail, one turn of hail damage. I'm pretty sure Water Spell with hail finishes off the Venu. Okay, they go for Protect. That makes sense. I honestly also didn't think they'd have Protect because they're running Meteor Beam. So that's the thing about Lunala. There's like six attacks that you'd want to use. Right? Like Meteor Beam is good. Any Psychic type attack is good. Moongeist Beam is good. Protect is good. Trick Room is good. Wide Guard's good. And so, yeah. Uh, honestly, was not fully anticipating the Protect there, but that's fine because I still get damage through Protect and now I set up the Hail as well, so you're re really on a timer. So it's like, now you bring Groudon, you change the weather back, but like, where's your damage output really coming from at this point? I'm just very curious what Lunala's final attack is, given that it has Protect. I would think it's Moongeist Beam. And the only scary thing here is now, does Lunala at plus three special defense in the sun actually survive a water spell? Maybe it does. So I may have been better off going for a max Quake there to not change the weather. Oh, never mind. They were always going to get the sun up anyway. So that doesn't make a difference. Uh, I'm just going to target the Lunala here. Water Spot and Hailstorm it. It just protected. Groudon's damage output here is very insignificant. So let's see if Lunala can somehow survive this. <laughs> it actually does. <laughs> oh, jeez, that's impressive. We should survive a Moongeist Beam, though, I think, so on either Pokemon, so I'm not really that worried about it. Had I targeted Groudon here, it would have been an insta win, but I was nervous about Groudon protecting. I wanted to guarantee the knockout onto Lunala, and they actually targeted Kyogre, and I actually survive as well. Jeez. So, bulky Lunala, but doesn't do as much damage. Yeah, so, uh, by the way, the reason I targeted Groudon there is because I really didn't want to deal with Groudon protecting, me not knocking them out from the Water Spell, and then them getting a free Moongeist Beam and a Calyrex Ice Rider. By doubling up in that position, I essentially guarantee a knockout onto Lunala no matter what they do. And once again, the will us from Mimikyu is just so good, because with that, it just meant, like, Groudon was not really much of a threat, right? Like, burning your opponent's Dynamax Pokemon on the first turn to the Dynamax is amazing. So, I think one interesting meta adaptation that players might consider as this format develops, especially with Calyrex Shadow Riders running will o -Wisp as well, is running more Lumberries on their physical attackers. So, yep, you just Hailstorm Groudon here. No crit attack here will even get the knockout, and so they'll probably protect, but... The thing is, even with Protect, I think Hailstorm plus Burn plus the Hail itself does enough damage to KO it, so, yeah. And even if not, I can obviously just Protect next turn. Yep, and that will do it. Beautiful. So, yeah, I mean, the, the main MVP of today's episode is really will o -Wisp, and even though we missed that first one, this game was scary, right? I definitely got a little bit lucky because I woke up quickly with Mimikyu. Things could have gotten dicey really quickly because they were just using Sleep Powder and I didn't really have a great strategy to prevent it outright. And I don't know, like, what's my best answer against Sleep Powder if I'm using this team? It, it would be Venusaur, but I really did not feel comfortable bringing Venusaur in team preview. Now, in a best of three, I'd actually consider it now knowing the Lunala doesn't even have a Psychic type attack because it's Moongeist Beam, Meteor Beam, Protect Trick Room. But in a best of one, I just, like can't in good faith really bring Venusaur comfortably against a Lunala, right? And so that's the thing, right? Movesets really make a big difference in a matchup, and Lunala not having a Psychic-type attack, oh, like, that single-handedly would actually sway me to bringing Venusaur a lot more in this matchup. Uh, and so things could have been really scary, and we were lucky enough to get a quick wake-up with Mimikyu and set up Trick Room immediately, but they honestly did a great job stalling out my Trick Room. Um, I'm just curious about that Thunderous set, because it didn't Dynamax, and it also didn't go for, like, a priority attack, so I'm thinking it was just offensive thunderous and maybe they're just going for a wild charge i'm really not sure honestly that that really caught me off guard like both games my kyogre has gotten so much more value out of turn one than i'd expected it to so obviously take it but definitely surprising either way though yeah i didn't do a great job preparing around like sleep powder in this one but i think it's tough because i don't really have a like easy solution outside of venusaur and venusaur itself isn't great and the thing about sleep powder is like the odds are more in my favor the more my opponent like if, if the goal is to, you know, hit multiple sleep powders and hope for, like, multi, you know, two to three turn sleeps, uh, the odds are a little bit more in my favor in that regard. And it's like a single miss dramatically changes the game. But 
you know, you did, it's not something you really want to rely on. That's why I think, yeah, you'll see players, like that's why Lumberry, your safety goggles is such a common item because it helps you play around it a little bit better. So yeah. Anyway, let's look for one final one. Game number three of the day, and it is Venusaur Groudon with Zacian. Okay, so a lot of Groudons today. That's three in a row. Hmm. Well, I mean, once again, I feel like I should just go towards Trick Room. Because the idea is that a plus two Calyrex under Trick Room one-shots everything on my opponent's team. Outside of maybe Dynamax Charizard. I've got Mental Warp here on Mimikyu, which is really valuable against Tauntor Encore as well. So then the question with this lead, as always, is can they deny Trick Room, right? You could lead something like... Mm, if you're Life Orb Charizard, for example, Zacian plus Charizard, and then just go for Behemoth Blade into GMAX Wildfire. I just don't feel great about... Like, it's the Venusaur that really scare me from using Seismitoad. That's just it. I feel so much more confident in Trick Room than relying on Seismitoad. Because the other thing is that Seismitoad's way less tankier than Calyrex, and it can't protect. Meaning, as soon as I commit my Dynamax to Seismitoad, I really need to be committed to sweeping with it, so... I'm just going to play with the same strategy as all three games today. I, I do think you can make an argument for Venu here, and if my opponent didn't have Charizard, I would actually use this as my main max option. But uh, Charizard alone is a really big threat. I think it's the main Dynamax option I would play towards if I were in my opponent's shoes, because it just does so much damage. Um, the other reason you want to really consider Charizard is because it's really good against my Calyrex. Otherwise, you know, it's not like Venus or Groudon actually scare me very much. So, yeah. The dynamic of a best of one is always interesting. Um, and they're going to go with Groudon and Venu. Okay. So I'll lose the Weather War. That's a pretty big downside. Um, hmm, Turn one's really interesting from my opponent's perspective, right? Because, like, do you just go for Sleep Powder? Uh, the other question is, do I even switch out this Kyogre? If they're leading this, I expect Zashian plus Incin in the back. Mm, are they going to be Sash Venu is the question. Okay, I'm not a Trick Room and Ice Beam here. Curious who, if any, maxes here. You could get away with not maxing either Pokemon here, because I don't pressure you with that much damage. Yeah. Yep, and it's just a Sleep Powder. Okay, that makes sense. Groudon didn't max, so I'm thinking it's maybe a Precipice Blades coming out from it. We're gonna get Ice Beam off. Oof, okay. Venu takes that. Uh, they do just go for Blades. That felt like Choice Band damage. Ah, Choice Band actually changes everything here. Oof. Oh, it's Life Orb. Okay, that also makes sense. Um, That is bad news for me. I'm gonna have to switch out Kyogre for Origin Pulse, but... Yeah, like, I, I keep trying to play around these Venusaurs, but, like, in this game, my Venusaur would have been a very effective lead. And if we were to do a best of three, that's the immediate adjustment I would make to beat my opponent's lead. I just didn't think they'd really just go with Groudon Venu, because, like, it's a little bit risky to lead with Weather immediately when I can just pivot in Kyogre, but it punishes my Kyogre lead pretty heavily, so well done on their end for that. Okay, mm. I think I gotta give up Torkoal here. Because the thing is, Kyogre is really low HP, but even if I just pivot it back in, it actually still outspeeds everything, and then the Origin Pulse threatens with a double knockout. So I'd rather conserve that. Smart Max. Very smart Max. I wonder who's maxing here, though. You would think it's Groudon, but Venu could be interesting just to get Vine Lash off. Yeah, okay. I think that's a cool play. Okay, so you're going to get Vine Lash off. Um... You're such low HP, but you've got Zashin in the back. Ah, yeah. Okay, they target Mimikyu. If you miss Precipice Blades here on Mimikyu, I actually think we... I wouldn't say win the game outright, but we'd be in an amazing spot. But they're going to hit. Okay, that's fine. The thing, though, is I think this game is nearly impossible to win from this position. And the reason for that is because I faint from two turns of Vine Lash at this point. Life Orb Groudon is really cool to see. Um, this game was really just one slash loss off the lead matchup, honestly. 
And so I haven't been punished too much for leading Mimikyu Kyogre yet, but in this game I did get punished. And I think Venusaur is probably the right answer. The reason I was afraid of it uh, is because my opponent has Whimsicott on their team, so they can pressure me with Tailwind. And I was like, well, okay, if I set up Tailwind and you have, ta or sorry, if I bring Venusaur and the Sun isn't up or, and, or you have Tailwind up, like I feel like I'm just going to get wrecked by you. But this would have been an amazing game for it. Yeah, the problem here is like they're just going to have Zacian in the back, right? <laughs> and so I'm going to go for Origin Pulse here. I'm going to Dynamax, and I might as well Steel Spike, I guess. Get a defense boost, but... Uh, we actually had a shot here, maybe, if I could have set Trick Room up with Calyrex, but I don't have Trick Room with it. So, yeah, this this was a game in which like my opponent just outled me, and I needed to find Venusaur against this. Like, I, I guess the, the thing about Venusaur is that you do have a get-out-of-jail card, essentially, thanks to Sleep Powder, right? And so it's like, I'm so hesitant in bringing it in so many of these games because I'm like, oh, it has a really bad matchup against Charizard. And, and granted, it does, right? It's like, Venusaur's amazing against everything on this team, and for that reason, I was like, okay, my opponent probably has to prioritize leading Charizard because otherwise my Venusaur will give them a lot of trouble. But they didn't, and I get punished really heavily for it. So the thing is, I could lead Venusaur because it's like, okay, well, even if you lead Charizard, well, I can just sleep out of your Charizard, right? It's just not something I really want to rely on. Yeah, they're going to protect Groudon. That makes sense. I think I faint from Vine Lash here. Uh, it's really close. I'm at, what, 28 HP? <laughs> and I missed the Venu anyway. So, yeah, not really much of a shot here. They do target Calyrex, though. That's interesting. But it makes sense because they're expecting Kyogre to faint anyway. Um, yeah, I don't really see a way to win this, especially after that miss. I think even if... I don't think that miss mattered, to be honest. Like, I, I lost way too much momentum in the early game in this one. I'm pretty sure I faint here, right? Yeah. This is just the... Like, how, how good the residual effects can be, right? So, let's, like, analyze this game a little bit and talk about why the Trick Room option didn't work out as well. It could be really interesting to actually have a Lumberry on Mimikyu, because I feel like they're just... I'm running into so much, or so many Venusaurs. Um, this game's over, so I don't want to take up any more of my opponent's time, but I do want to talk about where things could have gone a little bit better. So, like I mentioned, what's really interesting about the dynamic of this matchup is that I have two really fast modes with Kyogre Seismitoad as well as Torkoal Venusaur, and my Venusaur actually crushes them outside of their, um, their Charizard, right? So, imagine if I just lead Venusaur plus Mimikyu in this position, Especially if I know their life orb as well, right? Like, my Venusaur is just in such a good spot. And, like, they don't even really have a safe switch into G-Max Vine Lash. You could switch an instant or Zashian, but then they still take an okay amount. And then, of course, take the one-sixth amount of damage from the residual afterwards as well. So, I think it's very likely they just didn't bring Charizard. And then they, you know, had Groudon Venu lead Zashian plus instant in the back. I think those four make a lot of sense to me. And if that were the case, then, yeah. Like, I missed out on a big opportunity in not bringing Venusaur. I think what I was scared about was like Whimsicott plus Charizard, and then Groudon plus Zacian, like that combination of Pokemon. Because let's say you go with that, for example. Mm, yeah, I guess, like, I, I just didn't find the most optimal lead though, right? Like, I don't know, is v Venusaur Mimikyu always more consistent? Because if they just go with Whimsicott plus Charizard, I guess I have um Sash though, so I can always pressure with Sleep Powder, and I have Mentor about Mimikyu. So... I think I just missed on uh, missed out on finding a good lead there. Like, Venu plus Mimikyu feels pretty strong, especially because their team index is so hard on having Groudon or, you know, Sun up in general. Then it's like, okay, well, if you go the Tailwind route, I have the Mental Herb on the Mimikyu, so I can just get Trick Room up. So, yeah. Um, I think Venusaur plus Mimikyu was just a stronger lead. The interesting thing to consider, then, is do I even bring Kyogre? Because I actually think it might be stronger to have Venu Mimikyu lead, Torkoal plus um, the Calyrex in the back. Kyogre is interesting, but the thing is that it obviously gets wrecked by the Venusaur, and, like... If I'm leading it, then I'm not really going to gain much weather control with it either. So I think this, weirdly enough, could have been a game where we actually just straight up drop the Kyogre and just index towards like setting up Trick Room while also using Venusaur to absorb some pressure early. Kind of like how I was using Kyogre to absorb pressure early in some of the other matches. So yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. So thank you so much as always for watching. I'm sad we didn't get to use Seismitoad as much, but you know I ran into three Groudon teams here and they all had Venusaur. So uh, it was a little bit harder to actually you know get Seismitoad out comfortably. And you can see my opponents were all prioritizing their Venusaur a lot as well. So uh, you just got to identify when it's the right matchup for it. And today, these games weren't the right matchups for it. So yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to answer the question of the day. Details for the team are in the description below and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.